Hmm. Shall I compare UUCCI to a summer's day? Our community is sun-filled and bright. And at times, stickier? No, that's not right. Um, hmm. Roses are red. Spinach is green. Um, hey, sorry, Lori. What are you? Um, what are you doing? I'm writing some Valentine's poems for our congregation. Oh, great! You know, writer, poet, as you are. I, I just um, you're supposed to be doing a call, a call to worship now. That's what's um, listed in the old order of service. I thought we were going to do something a little more creative today. Yeah, but uh, that's a little later. Um, I know you're kind of the creative type. Uh, for now, let's just um, let's just stick to the call to worship, okay? Okay, call to worship. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, Nick. Yep. Um, well, the thing is, I I didn't really write a call to worship because I was, Lori. You know, Oh, concentrated on these poems and. Uh, okay, uh, well, I guess now uh, you're just gonna have to go with this. You're gonna have to just go with one of your poems. I hope it's uh, been peer reviewed or something, and we'll we'll talk more about beloved community. I guess later in the service. So, uh, good lord. Uh, yeah. Okay, just go for it. Beloved community. Actually, I I do have a poem that I feel like will will fit with beloved oh. community and. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Let me just, just try it out here. Just jump okay. in. Yep. How bad could it be? Okay. <laughs> Roses are red. Mm -hmm. Blue is the sky. True. I'm happy to have found UUCCI. Oh, man. That is like perfect. That is like a, that you're making my jokes seem pretty good and puns. And that was beautiful, Lori. <laughs> Good. I guess that will um, suffice. You need to start a Hallmark offshoot. Chalice lighting? Yeah. Okay, good. You're following along. Yeah, now it's time for the chalice lighting. Okay. Never a dull day with the Sunday services team. So, um, okay. My, um, okay, just looking for my wonder box here. Um, what? Lori, what are you, you took my wonder box again? This is an April Fool's Day. What do you, what do you have in there? Well, I thought it was appropriate that I had the wonder box today because in the wonder box Here we go. are some um, poems and cards that I wrote when I was a little kid for my parents. And I just thought I'd share them with everybody today. Is that all right? Yeah, that sounds way better than whatever I would have pulled out of there. So that's great. <laughs> okay, well, I hope that some of you have made some homemade cards and sent them to friends and family. Maybe you've received some recently. I mean, I know I've been painting a lot of cards. So, um, but when I was a kid, I used a lot of glue and tape and crayons and markers and glitter and all that kind of stuff. And um, recently my mom moved and gave me a few things that she found, which is really surprising because my mom doesn't say very many things. So um, this is one that I did when I was like a kindergartner. I don't know if you could see the kindergarten picture on there. That's what was, that's what we did back in like 70 something. Um, and this one's a pretty simple one, basically just saying happy Valentine's day to mom and dad. Um, I'm sure the teacher kind of helped us out with that one. This one, I was probably maybe, I was still in elementary school, but by then I was starting to get a little more creative and uh, I always had a sense of humor. So I don't know if you can see this guy here, but on the top, it's like a heart and I call him Freda Hart instead of Freda Stare. And he's singing Heart of My Heart. Can you see that? <laughs> and of course, you know, I have the kind of snowflake Heart going here for Happy Valentine's Day. And then um, 
like I said, I, at, the older I got, the more creative I got, and I started writing more poetry. So here are some of my poems that I wrote to my mom on her birthday, and my mom's birthday is actually coming up this week, so it's pretty fitting. Um, the first one, of course, is the traditional roses are red, violets are blue rhyme. Roses are red, violets are blue, with no more to be said. Happy birthday to you. And then another poem. Good title, eh? A mother can be sweet. She makes you things to eat. But when you are bad, she has a mood very mad. And that mood I call stinky feet. I used to have a lot of fun making cards for my family and friends. And I still do that today. Um, like I said, now I've been doing a lot more painting cards. There's a couple here. That's a floral one that I've done. Here's a flamingo. So some of you might have received some cards from me recently, and some of you may still be getting cards from me. So keep your eyes open for that. But maybe that inspired you today to um, make some cards for some of your loved ones, and they can fondly remember you. Lori, I just have to say, your your jokes are at the level of like minister. So like, I hope you don't have a second career going here, but those are some pretty good ones. Um, <laughs> oh, what, what'd you say? Oh, it's a secret. Said, it's right, a secret. yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, well, thank you for stealing my wonder box. I, I don't feel as, <laughs> um, as uh, slighted anymore. You are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether tears have fallen from your eyes this past week or gleeful laughter has spilled out of your smiling mouth. You are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you are feeling brave or brokenhearted, defiant or defeated, fearsome or fearful. You are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you have untold stories buried deep inside or stories that have been forced beyond the edges of comfort. You are beloved and you are welcome here. Whether you have made promises, broken promises, or are renewing your promises. You are beloved and you are welcome here. Whatever is in your heart however it is with your soul in this moment. You are beloved and you are welcome here. In this space of welcome and acceptance, commitment and recommitment of covenant and connection. You are beloved and you are welcome here. As Lori mentioned, we wanted to do something a little more creative on this Sunday on this uh, Sunday of Valentine's Day, but also on this theme of beloved community. Last week, we talked a lot more about history and we talked about our um, relationship perhaps, or maybe it's a foggy relationship or maybe it's a relationship we're very curious about to this beloved community. And how is that different than community? Well, today we wanted to explore a little bit about that uh, a, a little more intentionally by, in, by bringing our voices together into talking about the ways we share love with ourselves and with one another and with the world. There is a lot of love in this space. I hope you feel it. I don't think I'm the only one or Lori is the only one. There's a lot of love in our congregation. We even say that our congregation uh, celebrates love. It's something we celebrate as a part of our mission, as a part of our purpose. And so today, in a way, we are going to be um, creating and crafting a love letter, or maybe perhaps it's a beloved letter to our UUCCI community, to one another, to those who come, those who came before us or those who will come after us, and to all those we seek to make a positive impact in the wider world. And so we're gonna have this sort of participation time. And not only is there a lot of love in this room, 
there's not a lot of reticence in this room. I hope I hope we see the the other thing. There's there's a lot of love, but there's not a lot of uh, uh, you know there might be some introverts in this group, but a lot of us like to share and participate. And so we're going to actually have these three rounds of sharing, three times that we can share either verbally or in the chat box. And the beauty of this love letter, beloved letter we are writing to UUCCI is that the more voices we have in it, uh, the more love um, is in it. So whether you feel comfortable speaking or you feel comfortable typing, or even if you do neither, if you hold that in your heart, I believe it will transfer into the final product. Also recognizing that we have three rounds and a lot of people in the room. And so we have a lot of love in this room. There are not a lot of reticence in this room. We also have a lot of beautiful things we could say. And so time-wise, we only have so much time to say those things. And so I invite you in all of your potency and love uh, to, if, to focus your comment as much as possible. So we're going to start within and we're going to move among and beyond in our community of love, a place where we celebrate love in order that we can create a beloved letter to our UUCCI community. And we're going to start with this idea of loving yourself, an idea that might be hard for some of us. It might be much easier to send a letter to someone else than to perhaps receive one or even to send one to yourself. And so we are going to start with loving yourself as an essential process, uh, an essential part to the process of being a beloved community. And so the question, the prompt, that you can speak aloud your response or write in the chat box is, what are ways that you show love to yourself? What are ways that you show love to yourself? And so what's going to happen is uh, I'm actually going to um, invite you to unmute yourself as you feel uh, so moved and or write it in the chat box. And um, you can raise your hand if you'd like, like me to unmute you. And we will try to together um, list some of the ways that we show love to ourselves. I take myself on a walk every day. Great. And try and, and breathe deeply. Take yourself on a walk every day and breathe deeply. I come and join with you guys and uh, I read spiritual things. I meditate, I do my healing services, I work on my songs, I do art, uh, and I actually try to clean my house. Louise uh, shows love to herself by trying to keep healthy. Lynette faithfully walks and does yoga. Uh, Jeff Jones does meditation and deep breathing. Peggy Sabo says, I allow myself quiet time to read late at night. Uh, Lynette, or this might be Jim, uh, also uh, shows love to himself by hiking and with cream cheese Danish. I, you're right, you know, Racine, Wisconsin. Come on now. Okay. Uh, I feel you on that one. I uh, think of five things I'm grateful for every morning. And I, I like to run at the, that's uh, showing love to myself. Uh, just putting things in perspective and uh, staying as peaceful as I can. That's a good way to show self-love. Uh, Diane Spofford says, by finding something beautiful in nature, got a little nature and walking theme, to make me smile every day. Sandra writes, forgive myself when I come up short. Great way to love yourself. Alyssa and Greg write, uh, Fisher write, get outside and enjoy nature. I'm seeing a theme and walk and regular and regularly walk regularly and avoid too many zoom meetings i'm glad we made the cut this week cynthia writes i indulge in academic study excellent finding satisfaction in writing a good paper finishing a difficult assignment 
and learning new things. This helps with self-esteem. Excellent, Cynthia. Adam and Leslie write, I set aside time to read things for my personal pleasure as opposed to things I feel I need to read. Dennis uh, Bowdy writes, saying no, even though I really want to say yes. That's a great one. Saying no, even though I want to say yes. Steve and Judy, I'm guessing this might be Steve's comment. I devour Judy's homemade cookies without shame. I love that. You better, you better believe it. And I never, I, I'd like a cookie. Donna Stanley writes, I get myself out to walk and baking. Jana Wheeler writes uh, that she walks her dog, enjoys the fresh air, um, eats natural food, and makes herself get enough sleep. Liz writes, go outside every night uh, to love the sky. Speaking of Valentine's card, thanks to Chris Kevitt for sending some of us a beautiful card that lived nearby or in support of the geo clusters. When I have the time, and I have the time in the last several months, I love to just go through recipes and just pick something that just sounds exactly what I'm hungry for. And whether if whether whether or not I have the ingredients, I'll go get them. But I love to cook. And I love to eat, and I like things uh, not in the, not ordinary. And so that's that's a way I please myself. And I'm I, I'm afraid I don't please my husband that way because he would love meatloaf and mashed potatoes every night for dinner. But <laughs> but I I need to I need to have a, a variety of of mm. of experiences eating and that's my that's how i please myself i love that appreciation <laughs> of intuitive eating and what looks right and then also ma uh, mashed potatoes as a important one for jim well let's just <laughs> let's just take all of these in for a second and think about this wonderful long list of of ways that we show love to ourselves. there is indeed a lot of love in this room not just for one another but for ourselves and so we're going to go on to the next part, which is loving others. So that was a lot. That was a lot about loving ourselves. I'm curious, what are ways that you show love to others? What are ways that you show love to others? It could be uh, a family member. It could be a, f a friend in the congregation. It could be a random person on the street. How do you show love to others? I don't point out other people's mistakes. They usually know when they've made one and I don't need to make a comment, so I don't. Excellent, excellent. Good to know. <laughs> um. <laughs> As a caregiver to my husband, Tom, I find that caregiving is love giving. Mm. And the more you do it, the more it comes back to you. He is so appreciative and loving himself that we just have this circle, this feedback going continually about how much we enjoy each other's love through this caregiving process. One way I show love to others is if it's appropriate, I try to make contact with, eye contact with them. I speak to them or I smile at them when I don't have a mask on or when I do have a mask on. And I learned early on, everyone appreciates a thank you, no matter who they are and where they are, if they've done something for you. Mm -hmm. I also do it by telephoning friends mm -hmm. and listening when a phone rings. John and Rhonda write, making food for hot meals. There's a good plug. Uh, Sandra writes, I try to stop my own internal chatter to really listen and be fully present to the person I am with. Uh, Lynette Farless writes, active list. Oh, Jim, I was not listening to the right person. Only Jim does that. No, no, I'm just kidding, Lynette. Active listening. You get to 50 years somehow. Um, uh, let's see here. Jesse Clark writes, showing patience when uh, needed and listening with intent to understand and not to respond. Excellent. And Peggy writes, making scrapbooks uh, uh, for, for grandkids and others uh, to save memories. And making, 
making their favorite foods. Mm, I'm curious uh, what um, Brady's favorite food is. Uh, How about writing an old note of appreciation like Marion Dobbs did? And I treasure that letter from before he died. He wrote everything about being you, you. Yeah. Like what we all appreciate. Like he said, for years, being with the people and everything and, and why he always liked that. I think that is to be always treasured because that is so rare. Like you said, a measure, if somebody special in the congregation, and yeah. I think of Marion and Friday too with Hot Meal, I'm going to miss him every time I'm around Hot Meal. So yeah, uh, just as an update, Brady likes teriyaki chicken. And then Jeff Jones also says, um, always start every day with an I love you to my wife, Therese. Absolutely. Lissa keeps, uh, or Lissa or Greg, I'm not sure, keeps, uh, their words as much as possible and cooking food for others. Yes, okay, I'm getting hungry. All right. This is Mary Lou. Yes. I send a lot. I send a lot of notes and cards to people. It's something I can do no matter the hour of the day or night and not, not intrude on other people's time. And I feel like I'm keeping contact with people. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Great to hear your voice, Mary Lou Mann. So there's a lot of ways that we show love to each other. And there's a lot of ways that that reflects back into our sense of loving ourselves, loving ourselves by loving others, loving others by loving ourselves. And so the last one is loving the wider community, loving this world, loving this this, this town, the towns that we live in, this broader broader love. What are ways that you express love for the wider world? What are ways that you express love for the wider world? I donate to charitable causes. Excellent. Excellent. Cynthia? Yes, I do a lot of that. Um, not only to UUCCI, but to, um, I'm, I'm part of ANSWER. So I, ha I sponsor a student in Nepal. Uh, I do donate to public radio and um, Wikipedia and IU. And <laughs> if you can't get out and about, money talks and, uh, and, and people appreciate that. Shoveled my walk. You shovel your walk? Yeah. You missed like two houses over. I, I, now, you're, now I gotta like go, get out there and shovel my walk. That's wonderful. And that is a really big thing, um, especially people who walk to work or walk to the walk to the bus or things like that. That's a wonderful way to show love to others. Pam writes that she recycles. Sandra travels and meets new people. Uh, break down those 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 walls between our, our differences. Jesse Clark writes the roadside trash pickup, uh, recycling, saying hello to people. Small little thing, but a great thing. Liz Rights have been volunteering at the food bank in Indy where they uh, are serving 1,000 households every day. Uh, lots of folks in need these days. Lori Swanson also plants trees. When we used to clean up the uh, Hawk Creek River, our church did that. But Excellent. That, that, we used to do that and we would bring bicycles back to be in locally in Columbus. There are two places that we build bicycles. So we've so that was years ago, and that's another way to get out. And we also used to work, some of us would get signed through our building that we used to be in charge of volunteering programs. Um, and we would be sent to like help with the, the uh, ladies, what do you call that, where they abuse ladies down on Washington Street, where they mm -hmm. hold house the people and help them get back sure. on their feet. Sure. So we cleaned that up. Excellent ways. Excellent, excellent. Diane feeds the birds. Um, D Dennis tries to be a giver rather than uh, than a taker, and let's and let talking be the result of giving as much as possible. Oh, and let taking and let taking be the result of giving as much as possible. Yes, excellent way to frame that. Uh, uh, Jana writes, uh, point out the positive side of things. All also smiles are contagious. Kiwanis projects from Jim. Uh, Sandra writes, serve on Human Rights Commission and other community services. Here we go. Uh, Nicole writes, try to be open and honest with my children in, about injustice so that future generations know better and do better. 
Aaron writes, I try to always keep learning and do my best to help patients understand their bodies to heal and stay healthy. Beautiful, beautiful. Jeff Jones writes, a meditation to the world. I inhale peace and exhale love. I inhale peace and exhale love. The way I show my love is to, I, I belong to more than one prayer group for open prayer. I also uh, share through the Dances Universal Police. That's a, that's a worldwide organization. Mm -hmm. I share with Mary in the spiritual development. Mm -hmm. And I, also, I feed the feral cats and dogs <laughs> and birds that live in the possums that live in my neighborhood. That's and I would just like to say one way the community has helped me in the last three years, I've probably only interacted with maybe 20 people. And many of those people were the cards that they sent me during all my surgeries. Mm -hmm. So the beloved community is, is one of the things I really appreciate is the, the, uh, the shared ministry of the community. That's right. Thank you, Anita. And, uh, and finally, um, Bud or Ann wrote that um, they call and write their senators and their representatives as a way to show love to the wider world. So let's just take a, take a moment here. We've talked about the ways that we show love to ourself. We've talked about ways that we have showed love to others and ways that we have showed love, shown love to the wider world. There's a lot of ways that these things kind of can both be constantly present, but not always fully aware of all the ways we do these things. There's a difference between love being really present in a community and us taking the time to slow down and to speak them aloud and name, almost like put them in a letter about the ways we hope to celebrate our love um, here and beyond these walls. So, you know, I'm really hoping that some of those words, um, that you jotted down some of those words, I'm hoping that uh, some of those stuck with you as ways that you could practice offering love to yourself or to others or to the wider world. 